Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, The Francophile Reader. So first I would like to apologize for the lighting. I am living in a new place here in Geneva, Switzerland. Um, it's a really nice apartment, but the lighting isn't great. So I have whatever lights we have here. Um, I'm gonna try to get more lighting so that it isn't as gloomy. But I wanted to sit down and talk to you about my academic adventures in the last few weeks, as well as introduce you all to our read-along in February of Communal Luxury, The Political Imaginary of the Paris Commune by Kristen Ross. Now this is a library copy. This book is quite short. Um, if you can tell, it's, it's quite a short book. So I think it's perfect for February. There are four weeks in February. And so I think that what we could do is every Friday, I will make a video. There are five chapters in, in this book. So I would like us to read through the second chapter, Communal Luxury, for the first week. And then for each of the following weeks, we'll read another chapter. And feel free to make your own videos if you are reading along, because I really would like us all to be able to talk about this. Um, this book is written by a professor emerita uh, who works on 19th and 20th century French political history. I'm excited about it, and that's what we'll be doing in February. As for myself and what I'm doing right now, I just finished doing the a dissertation. So I'm going to use the French pronunciation, but the word is dissertation. Now the reason why I'm using the French pronunciation of the word is because I want to distinguish the dissertation from what as Americans we refer to as the dissertation, which is a doctoral thesis. That is not what well, I am beginning to do that, but that is not what I just completed. What I just completed was an exam, and the exam is the dissertation. It is this eight-hour written exam wherein I respond to a prompt. Uh, now, the exam was about the querelle des femmes, or the um, quarrel of women, which occurred in the 15th and 16th centuries. Um, and it dealt with women, women writers, the representation of women in literature, questions about the authority of the author. And a lot of these topics are still relevant today as we talk about representation in literature, harmful representation, um, whether you know, words can be harmful in fiction. What is the responsibility of the author? Does the author's identity matter? Um, these are the kind of questions that really began to be discussed, at least in the West, in the early 15th century. And this debate was prompted by Christine de Pizan. So Christine de Pizan is an author I have talked about here before, and she was very critical of the Romance of the Rose, which was a 13th century massive poem of like 27,000 lines. Uh, the first part of the Romance of the Rose was written by Guillaume de Loris, but it is really the majority of the poem that Christine finds the most offensive, and that was written by Jean de Main, okay? But, so a, hundred, a few hundred years later, there are several humanists who really love the Romance of the Rose and celebrate it. In fact, it was, in the Middle Ages, a huge bestseller. I mean, it was second only to the Bible in France. But Christine de Pizan, who herself was a writer and a poet, uh, was patroned by the Queen of France, Isabeau de Bavière. She thought that the Romance of the Rose was very harmful in its representation of women, that it promoted misogyny. And she started writing letters um, criticizing those who defended Jean de Main and the Romance of the Rose. And it's this correspondence that was, at least in part, what my dissertation was about. So I, was, I had to have a corpus, which is basically just a bunch of documents that we discussed in class, about three major quarrels. So the first was the querelle des femmes, about little women. The second was about the belle dame sans merci, uh, which I guess would be translated as the beautiful woman without mercy. Uh, it's by Alain Chartier. Uh, this was written in the late 15th century. And then the third debate was uh, over a very obscure writer named Drouzac, who wrote this 
huge work of poetry trashing women, calling them whores and Satan and just like the most horrific things you could possibly imagine about women. And it's just like from, from one ballad to another, he's insulting women in all the different creative ways that he can. In fact, he even has a chess board that he creates where, you know, you could go diagonal and however you go diagonally, you, you can basically create poetry filled with insults towards women. So, <laughs> as you can imagine, um, especially in this third controversy, um, there is something else going on here. It's, it's not just, you know, a debate about women, it's also a debate about um, language and about um, authors trying to put themselves forward through writing these very, very polemical pieces. And so, yeah, so I had this corpus, and then on the day of the exam, you're given a prompt. Now, the prompt is usually in the form of a quote from a scholar, and the scholar sort of makes this claim. Sorry, I just banged against the door. Uh, the scholar makes this claim, and then you're asked to evaluate it. Now, the dissertation is in three parts. The first part is where you kind of show how this critic came to this conclusion, whatever conclusion he or she came to. The second part is, you know, you kind of showing maybe another point of view. And, but it is the third part of the dissertation that is the most difficult because it's where you say something new, something that really hasn't been considered before in this conversation. It takes somewhat of a Hegelian dialectical method in that the first is kind of defense, the second undermines the argument, and the third one tries to find something that brings both opposing perspectives together. I found that part to be the least difficult, actually, figuring out how I was going to structure the dissertation, what my arguments would be. What is the most difficult is writing. Um, so I had to write anywhere between 12 and 14 pages. This is by hand. Okay, um, but that's a lot of writing. Now you get two breaks, at least at the University of Geneva, where you can get up and go to the bathroom and whatever. But I didn't take any breaks and I didn't stand up for eight hours, <laughs> which um, because I'm a slow writer, I felt like I needed to do. And once I'm in the zone, I just keep going. I wouldn't recommend that. I think that you should, you know, take the breaks, um, clear your mind, stuff like that. My hand was like super cramped at the end of it. <laughs> But, um, but yeah, this was a really interesting experience and I'm so glad that I decided to do this. As an exchange student, I didn't have to do the dissertation. It's an exercise that is very French and while aspects of this exercise I have done in the US um, because, you know, we have done timed exams where we have to respond to a prompt, I have never had to do an exam for, that is this long over literature. Um, and I just found it to be a really interesting experience. So I will update you on kind of what happened. Um, I'm not going to go into details about the grading, but sort of give you a general gist of the strengths, the weaknesses, things that I have learned in this experience. If you are someone who studies French and has a pretty high level of French, it's daunting to have to do a dissertation, but I definitely recommend it. I think it's a really interesting experience and you get to see how literature is assessed outside of the English speaking world. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely recommend it. It was a really interesting experience. I was so exhausted at the end of it. It began at 8 a.m. and I finished at 4. In some ways it was nice because I could get it over with. I could just do the dissertation in the eight hours and then I was done. Um, it wasn't like I was working on this paper over so many weeks, uh, which is what I'm used to. It's what I'm used to doing, writing term papers at the end of the semester. But anyway, that was my experience with the dissertation. I hope you all will join me on our reading of communal luxury. Um, let me know what you have been doing in the beginning of 2020. Have you done anything new? Any new experiences? Thank you everybody for watching and I will talk to you later. Bye now.